going to sing our last chorus. It says, oh, I keep coming back to the well of grace. Great is its power and sweet is its taste. Whatever temptation and trial I face, I keep coming back to the well. And so many times I had to go to that well of grace. So many times I went to that well of prayer, if you want to put it that way. Because I believe in prayer and I know that there's power in prayer. There's power that in prayer that can change people, it can change things, and it can change a home. And it sure changed our home. I wanted a Christian home from the day we got married. But it seemed as though God was, he didn't want to go to church at that point in time. But the time came when he, after 24 years of prayer, myself and my four children always went to church. Not to the Salvation Army. I wasn't in the Salvation Army. I, I came from another denomination. But I came from a denomination that taught the Bible. They talked that I was supposed to be born again. And at 14 years old, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And I have often wondered many times since then, where would I have been if I had not knelt to that little mercy seat in the Gospel Hall in Western Bay when they were singing a song that said, Pass me not, O loving Savior. Hear my humble cry. One on others that are calling, don't pass me by. I came from a very poor family, very poor. My father died when I was 10 years old and left six of us. It wasn't easy for my mother to raise us, but with tears and with prayers to God, she seen all of us raised, and all of us went to church at a point in time. And we all, as far as I know, gave our lives to Jesus Christ. It's only a few weeks ago that we stood by our brother in Carpenter Hospital, and we watched him pass into eternity. He was preaching that night, and he gave the altar call, and I gave my life to the Lord. I knew it was only one way that I was going to meet my Father in heaven, and that was to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. That was at 14, that was all that was on my mind. I had lost a father, and I wanted to see him desperately again. But I thank God tonight that many of our siblings, there's only myself and Florence left, in the six of us right now. But I thank God that I see many of my siblings giving their life to the Lord before they passed away. And someday there's going to be a wonderful reunion in heaven. We're going to be sitting around at Jesus' feet. And we're not going to worry about the trials that we went through. Many of us have been through many trials. We've had hardship. But I thank God that the Lord provided for us and that he watched over us, and he's been there, no matter what the circumstances of life was for all of us. As I was raised in the Gospel Hall, by the time 1981, I think it was, I was a very discouraged Christian. You see, there's still things wasn't going the way that I wanted them to go, but the Lord had other plans. 1981 up to 1984. 1983, I think it was, my sister-in-law said, let's go over to Hans Harbor. They have wonderful services over in the Salvation Army. I went to the Salvation Army. It was, I'd say it was for the second time once in St. John's, I think I went when I was working in there. And when I went in, the place was blocked. It was left hand's uncle that was preaching. Terry Mullen. He had a wonderful message. On the way coming out, he spoke to us and he asked me, he said, it seems like there's some concern upon your heart. If you ever need to speak to anybody, I'll be there for you. I left and I went home. The next week, we decided we would drive all the way to Hans Harbor from Western Bay again. We went to Hans Harbor. It was a good many sunny nights. And I was tired by Monday morning because I had to go to work, but it didn't make any difference. It was a lot of choruses that was sang there that I never heard before, but they were speaking to me once again. And the Spirit of the Lord was speaking to me, and I was a Christian, but I was discouraged. But I thank God that that discouragement left after a little while. I told God at one point in time, I thought I had gone to heaven when I went to the army. To hear all the singing, and but now the drums was a little loud, I wasn't used to that. Uh, but anyway, I did you know, for that point, I don't know how loud they are now. But that was back 30 years ago. In 1984, 
I decided I wanted to go to the women's ministry. I loved the idea of getting involved with some women. I didn't speak in church because that was not permitted in our denomination. But I went to the home league and I started to mix with some of the ladies and they had one full week of ministry. I said to God, I will keep this up because we're a few miles away, I just won't be able to go to Laura Cove every day. But the Lord took care of that. I didn't have the glory of that, that was just me. And I thank God tonight that when I started coming, I made many friends. They told me that they were praying for me. That morning that Lloyd decided that he was going to come. He had come a few weeks before that. The first night that this citadel was open, I prayed to God that he would give me some kind of a sign, that he would give me a church home and a family. I wanted to be accepted. I, want, I didn't want the discouragement in my life, but I had it. And that discouragement went. I knelt many times at this mercy seat, uh, but the first Sunday night I cried out to the Lord, show me some sign, give me, what do you want me to do for you? Exactly. But I asked the Lord, I said, I want something done for me. My sister came and accepted the Lord. When we got home, Lloyd said, did you know that Florence was going to accept the Lord tonight? I said, no, we don't know these things. It's only how the spirit moves. I said, I really thought that you would have charmed me at mercy seat. He never answered. But the next Sunday night, the Lord answered prayer after 24 years. And he did charm me at the mercy seat. It's not always easy for a man at 48 years old and like to, like to be in the world. And the world was just only for a season. He drank somewhat. But we went home that night, and guess what? A half a bottle of whiskey went down the drain in our sink. The drain was cleaned out that night because Lloyd had given up drinking, he had given up his habits in the world, and he had turned his life over to Jesus Christ. What a wonderful home in these last 30 years. We haven't missed too many meetings, not here in Laura Arm Cove. And I thank God that he has provided the way. And I thank God for all the friends that I made and the prayers that went up for me from this court. And I just want to thank him and praise him tonight that I can still keep coming back to the well of grace. I still have needs that I ask the Lord about. Sure I do. But the Lord someday is going to answer their needs. And he's been faithful to me all of over those years. And I thank God tonight that I accepted him when he was a kid. And like I said on the first of it, I don't know where I would have been if I did not give my life to Jesus Christ. Who knows? But I thank God that he picked me up as a young person and put my feet on the solid rock, Christ Jesus. Let's stand as we sing this chorus together. I keep coming back to the well of grace. Do they keep coming back to the well of grace? He's here for each one of us. Oh, I'm to the power of the